dip down. We're expecting that entry interface to start pretty soon where the vehicle itself's really going to start heating up. It's gonna to continue to use its Draco thrusters to maintain its attitude as it continues through the Earth's atmosphere. And we'll have that calm blackout coming up in just a couple of minutes as well. Just heard the cabin purge has started again. This is when they're going to flush the cabin of Dragon with cooled air. They're also going to do a suit purge uh, running cooled nitrox through the suits for Bob and Doug just to keep things at a comfortable temperature for them as the capsule goes through the re-entry and starts to heat up. So like we said, we are anticipating a brief blackout period where we're unable to communicate with the capsule. That's, uh, we're expecting that to start in exactly three minutes. Uh, that will last for six minutes total. And during that time, we will be unable to command the vehicle or receive telemetry. That being said, Dragon is designed to be fully autonomous. So it's driving itself anyway. <laughs> So Bob and Doug uh, will, will stay fastened in their seats. Uh, and like I said, that anticipated loss of signal, or as you'll hear it called LOS, is anticipated to last for just six minutes. During that blackout period, the capsule will, uh, will encounter what's known as entry interface. This is when the capsule is now uh, really in the Earth's atmosphere and beginning to be subject to aerodynamic forces. Uh, this is also when a lot of that friction will begin to build up and raise the external temperatures. Dragon SpaceX, we show two minutes until predicted calm blackout. We will see you on the other side at 1842. <laughs> Dragon Tappies, 1842, we'll talk to you then. So there's that heads up uh, communication from Mission Control to Dragon Endeavor, confirming that comms blackout. Like I was saying, during the blackout, the Dragon capsule will be going through entry interface where it is encountering aerodynamic forces really starting to build up uh, the external temperature as it, and that external temperature will reach about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the, the, the interior of the cabin is environmentally cooled, so Bob and Doug will, should, be, should remain comfortable during their descent. There will be cool air flowing not only through the cabin itself, but also through their suits. The suits have sensors on them that are able to detect the temperature inside that suit. And once, it, once uh, that sensor reads that uh, it has reached the, the maximum temperature threshold, uh, it'll flush the suit with some cool air and, uh, and really circulate and, and cool it down. All right, well, we are right around that estimated blackout time. As we heard the call, we'll see them on the other side, expected to regain that communication at about 42 minutes after the hour. So for these next six minutes, they're already less than 60 miles in altitude. And this is when the capsule is really heating up during that reentry, reaching temperatures of around 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, as again, you're essentially hitting the atmosphere more than 17,000 miles an hour and the friction building up that plasma around the spacecraft. And that's what's gonna prevent us from talking to Bob and Doug or getting data back from the spacecraft for the next six minutes. Its flight computers are in control though. It's going to continue to maintain its appropriate trajectory and attitude. Uh, having attitude determination devices on board the capsule, not reliant on communications with satellites. And it's going to continue dragging down the correct path for this splashdown off the coast of Pensacola. So uh, we are in that blackout period. We're gonna continue to stand by until we get them on the other side.
All right, and just about two minutes after we get acquisition of signal, AOS, back with Dragon, we're gonna be looking for those parachutes, and we should hopefully be getting some views from a couple of our assets out at the landing zone, including our WB-57 high altitude research plane, which is gonna be relying on Dragon's telemetry to actually lock onto it in the sky and give us an infrared view of the capsule during the final stages of re-entry. We're gonna be looking for the drogue deploys at about 44 minutes after the hour. Those will be two drogue shoots that are gonna come out when the vehicle is still moving at about 350 miles an hour. And it'll be at an altitude of about 18,000 feet. They'll come out and do some initial slowing and stabilization of the spacecraft. And then uh, less than a minute later, they'll detach and the four main parachutes will deploy. You'll see them come out and look kind of closed up initially, and then they'll do what's known as reefing, opening up in really two different stages just to minimize the immediate loads on the parachutes themselves. Uh, those main parachutes will come out at an altitude of about 6,500 feet with Dragon already slowed down to 119 miles an hour. And they'll do the rest of the slowing the whole way down until we splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. We should be 10 minutes away from splashdown. So right now we're getting our cameras on the WB-57 airplane, which is in the area, uh, getting those cameras ready to give us our first glimpse. And we should still have about three minutes left, a little less than three minutes until we anticipate reacquiring our signal and our connection with Bob and Doug and the Dragon spacecraft. If you're just tuning in, we are in a blackout period that we were expecting. Uh, this blackout period will last a total of six minutes and we're about halfway through there now. Uh, at the moment, Dragon is re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and due to the plasma building up on the exterior of the vehicle, uh, we're unable to communicate or send commands, but Dragon is fully autonomous. It is steering itself. Uh, and right now, Bob and Doug are flying home. Dragon SpaceX com check. So we're still inside that anticipated blackout window. It does look like we are getting uh, maybe some sporadic data starting to peek through. This is why you heard that communications check with the spacecraft. Dragon, SpaceX, comm check. Never had you loud and clear. We're about 3.9 G. Copy, we've got you five by five as well, Doug. Looking good and you can expect an automated shoot deployment. Copy, automated shoot deployment. All right, really good news there. We have come out of the blackout period and we have reestablished connection with Dragon Endeavor with NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley on board. We were able to reacquire that communication a little bit earlier than expected. And now we are just waiting. We should just be about two and a half minutes away from that initial drogue shoot deploy. Yeah, two minutes and 26 seconds. A GPS has converged. Copy that. You may have heard earlier that Bob and Doug are currently experiencing 3.5 Gs. Not too bad. That's about what they pulled during the ascent phase. Just like a mild roller coaster.
So the vehicle is now over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it is approaching the landing zone uh, off the coast of Florida near Pensacola. And there we have our first shot. There it is, this, the first view from the WB-57 airplane. It is dipping in and out a little bit. This is gonna be an infrared camera showing us Dragon re-entering. We have that comm back with Bob and Doug. Uh, you heard AGPS is converging. Uh, Dragon has uh, three GPS units that it uses uh, actually in the parachute deployment process uh, as it helps uh, along with the pressure sensors really give a solid altitude to the flight computers on when these are supposed to deploy. We're standing by for the drogue shoot deployments. We should be just under five minutes away from splashdown. Passing 15 kilometers, brace for drogue window. Happy, we're braced. Just about 14 kilometers in altitude, 8.4 miles continuing to descend. There on your screen, we have a shot of the capsule as it is preparing to deploy those initial parachutes, the drogue parachutes. Again, these parachutes help slow the vehicle down even further and help stabilize in preparation for main chute deployment. Right about now, the capsule is going about 400 miles per hour decelerating quickly. And standing by for drogue deploys. Visual, two drogues out. There on your screen, we have visual confirmation of those two drogue deployments. Happy do drogue. All right, so two of two, the drogues now out. They're gonna do their slowing and stabilizing of the Dragon spacecraft. They should be detaching in just a few moments, and then we'll see four parachutes, the main parachutes deployed. Dragon under drogues. Drogue descent rate nominal. So the expected descent rate, the expected velocity under the drogues nominal, we're right at around 150 miles an hour and already dropping. You can see the drogues now detach. And there we have confirmation of deployment of the four main parachutes. We are visual on four chutes out. We are visual. Four main parachutes deployed. Four main. So at this point, the main parachutes have deployed. They are inflating, as you can see there on your screen, continuing to slow Dragon down significantly. We are anticipating splashdown in just under two minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, we've already slowed the vehicle down to about 16 miles an hour. It's already less than a kilometer in altitude. Main chute descent rate nominal, passing through 700 meters. So at this point, Dragon has saved all propulsion systems on 600 board. 600 meters. 600 meters. And we're 600 meters above the Gulf of Mexico. Should be approximately a minute 30 from splashdown. Mission Control Team here in Hawthorne has reported the precise landing coordinates to the recovery team. They are standing by, ready to go get our space dads. Passed about 300 meters, one minute till splashdown. Two 
300 meters. We are braced for splashdown. Copy, braced for splashdown. So there we heard Bob and Doug reporting that they are bracing for a splashdown. We should be able to see uh, the Gulf of Mexico here in the shot just momentarily, as we're now just about 20 meters off the ocean. Splashdown. As you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation for splashdown. SpaceX copies and concurs. We see splashdown and mains cut. Dragon Endeavor has returned home. NASA astronauts and Bob Endeavor and Doug. On behalf of the SpaceX and NASA teams, welcome back to planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. <laughs> flight of the uh, Crew Dragon and Endeavor. Congrats everybody at SpaceX. Uh, all good. And we're uh, into section of four decimal eight zero zero. Thanks for those words, Doug. And we uh, copy that you are into uh, four decimal eight zero zero. So great news all around there. Our space dads are back on Earth after a 19-hour return journey from space. Dragon Endeavor has splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico, just off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. And on your screen there, you can see our two fast boats, and they are indeed fast, <laughs> racing out to greet Dragon Endeavor as uh, it sits there. The first on there, we can see a view inside the capsule. Bob and Doug looking good. Although the communication was a little choppy, we did Stay hear. Next, uh, endeavor in three decimal one, we show ourselves in stable one. And SpaceX copies for uh, vehicle assessment, step three decimal one, stable one. Good news. Stable one, essentially. They're upright in the water, stable two. Uh, also another potential where it could be on its side or even upside down, but Dragon does have a water ballast system. Uh, to keep it upright where it's able to essentially pump seawater uh, into bladders in the service section of the capsule. But they're upright. We already see the fast boats approaching. They touched down, uh, came right on time at 11.48 a.m. Pacific, uh, 18.48 uh, UTC. Bob and Doug now in the water and the recovery ops, they've already begun. We're, we already see the, the fast boat starting to move in. Uh, we're still maintaining that good communication back uh, with Bob and Doug and the team here in Hawthorne. Uh, pretty soon we should be getting uh, the go for them to move in, begin their hypergall sniffs and uh, begin wrangling up those parachutes. But we can see Bob and Doug inside the capsule back on planet Earth. Yeah, those fast boats will be moving in to do a couple of things. Uh, they'll be performing what's known as a sniffer test. That's essentially to ensure that the air around the vehicle uh, doesn't have any toxic fumes from the hypergolic propellants on board. So once we get the all clear from there, uh, the water recovery lead will give the uh, will give the go for approach, and that's when the the first fast boat will actually approach the capsule. Hopefully give a little wave to Bob and Doug through the window <laughs> and uh, one of the crew members will, uh, one of the team members will actually climb on top of Crew Dragon and begin to um, begin to place the rigging equipment necessary to hoist Dragon out of the water. Oh, still getting a view from the WB. Uh, the airplane flying overhead, it gave us those, those great views of really our first views of Bob and Doug re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, from up above. You can see the four parachutes in the water. Uh, we heard those were cut automatically uh, as expected by Dragon. Uh, so for now, the crew just standing by. Again, they're gonna stay in their suits, in their seats. Uh, we're waiting for all these initial checks. Dragon SpaceX comm check. Loud and clear, hello. Loud and clear as well. Just wanted to verify a quick comm reconfiguration. Thank you. So 
So essentially what just happened there is they reconfigured. And Solo, if you can just relay uh, the status of the uh, fast boats and the recovery uh, as you get them, we would appreciate it. You bet, absolutely, Doug. Uh, we'll go. So what just happened there, you, you heard uh, comms reconfiguration that's essentially looping bob and doug's communication into the launch or excuse me into the recovery team uh, so that if not, they can hear feedback from bob and doug directly as well now I, we talked a little bit about uh, spacex uh, endeavor you can let ben and james know uh, we're doing pretty good so far okay we'll let the flight docs know that you're feeling good so far thanks for that update Really good news there to hear that they're feeling good uh, and they can let the flight surgeons know that all is well inside Dragon Endeavor. All right, and it sounds like we do have uh, one of our folks that's on location there with the recovery forces, NASA's Brandy Dean. She's been, she's uh, joining us by satellite phone. Brandy, if you can hear me. I mean, what is it like right there on the water? What was it like to watch Dragon Rear uh, watch them splash down for the uh, test objective? Uh, so stand by at the console once we get it up and operating and looking. Okay, SpaceX copies. We'll be ready for that in just a couple minutes. We should have the uh, go for you in just a moment. Please stand by. There in the center of your screen, Dragon Capsule, awaiting for the fast boats to approach and begin the rigging process. And there on the left-hand side of your screen, we can see that second fast boat come into view. Dragon SpaceX, we are go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personal personnel aside alongside in just under a minute. Thank you. All right, so they're starting to move in. As Kate just said, that first boat's going to go in, sniff around the capsule for any traces of hypergalls. The second one's going to start rounding up the parachutes, uh, which we're getting some really cool views from the WV-57 still flying overhead. Uh, looking down, you can see the parachutes in the water, and the second boat start to gather them up. Uh, We'll try one more time real quick. Uh, we have NASA's Brandy Dean out with the recovery forces. Brandy, if you can hear me, what was it like to watch this dragon come down under parachutes? Oh, it was amazing. I wish everybody could have had my view. It was such a beautiful sight. It was a gorgeous day. The water is calm, really the best weather we could have asked for. Um, and we did, we heard the, um, the sonic booms as it made its way back. We were able to find it early on as the parachutes were deploying. So it was very exciting for everybody who was gathered here. That's incredible. We actually had some questions from people if you'd be able to hear the sonic boom and we weren't sure. So I'm really glad you just answered that for us. Um, I mean, we talked so much about the weather. You said it looks great. What, I mean, what was it like on the ride out there? Has it just been kind of clear skies and clear seas the whole way? I'm not sure if you can hear me right now, um, but you were asking about the weather, whether it was clear skies. There are just a kind of a circle of clouds along the horizon, very low, but um, the, the, we were able to see the parachutes far above the clouds and then follow it all the way until it's flashed down. All right, well, we're not getting any views on the boat, so what kind of activity is taking place right now? We're able to see the fast boats approaching the capsule. Uh, what's everybody doing on the boat to just kind of get everything ready? Uh, the boat's also making its way for the capsule. I can't see it with my with my rear eyes um, yet, but we're getting closer. Um, everybody's been kind of standing by, um, holding ready positions for quite a while now. 
now. So as soon as it, as soon as it flushed, you know, people that just sit in and start working on their own, their own activities. All right, copy that. Well, we're going to keep watching from here. Um, thanks for calling in, and thanks for being out there with everybody and getting us these great views. It's really incredible. Uh, thanks, Brandy. We hope to get you back in port soon, uh, and we'll talk to you back in Houston. So there on your screen, uh, ooh, camera view change. That is a view coming to us from Go Navigator, the recovery vessel. Uh, the two fast boats are out there getting to getting ready to uh, basically uh, plot, or excuse me, install the rigging equipment required to hoist the dragon out of the water. Uh, one, the other fast boat is actually collecting the parachutes from the water. We definitely want to uh, bring those back on board with us. Uh, but shortly here, we should actually see one of the team members uh, crawl up onto the side of the capsule in order to install that, uh, install the rigging like I, I mentioned. That particular team member is highly experienced and highly trained, as you can imagine, climbing on top of an oddly shaped thing in you know, the ocean <laughs> could be a little tricky. So uh, this person has undergone a lot, hours and hours of training and certification in order to perform this very important task. There on the right-hand side of your screen, we see the second fast boat approaching. Uh, of course, both of these boats uh, needed to wait for their cue uh, from the water recovery lead in order to approach Dragon after splashdown. Uh, again, that was just to make sure that there weren't any toxic vapors in the air. Uh, and now that they got the all clear, we do see them beginning to work uh, on and around the Dragon capsule. So even though the camera's a little shaky, uh, that water looks super, super duper uh, smooth, almost like glass, which is certainly ideal for a water recovery like today. Yeah, got to remember that this is a view from the, the main recovery vessel, which was still a few miles away from the splashdown Dragon point. SpaceX, we have hypercrawl sweeps and unfired ordnance checks uh, nominal. Rigor is on board the vehicle about two, five minutes until capsule lift. Copy that. Yep, we see them uh, walking outside, and uh, good news. All right, confirmation there that all of those hypergolic uh, vapor tests came out uh, positive, or rather negative, which is a positive thing. <laughs> uh, so the team was able to approach, and now the crew member that is installing the rigging is on top of the capsule. It's difficult to see there uh, because the slower vessel, that re the primary recovery ship, is a little further away. But as we heard, it's just a mere two and a half minutes until uh, they will be hoisted out of the water. Um, I'm sorry, tw 25 minutes, not... 2.5, I misheard that. Yeah, they're fast, but they're not that yeah. fast. Uh, we also have been hearing that uh, the secondary boat, which its primary mission in this case is securing those parachutes, uh, they've already got buoys attached to both droves and uh, two of the four mains and already had eyes on the other two, so they're moving through that work pretty quickly. Again, their primary responsibility, getting those parachutes together. Uh, the droves uh, detaching from the spacecraft uh, right before the deployment of the mains, the mains automatically detaching immediately as Dragon detected splashdown. Uh, all of that happening right per the timeline. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about the hardwired buttons that Bob and Doug have on their seats and in their control uh, displays, and cutting the, the main chutes is one of those buttons. In the event that they weren't automatically cut after splashdown, Bob and Doug would have had uh, the ability to do so. Uh, if the winds were stronger and they caught the parachutes, it could certainly create a condition where the capsule could be moved unintentionally by those dragging parachutes. So definitely want to avoid that. So uh, that's one of the, the few buttons that are hardwired into the cabin for the crew. And again, right now, we're expecting about 20 minutes 
uh, for the, the main recovery vessel, the GOAT Navigator, to reach Dragon. By that point, all the rigging will be affixed, and then they'll be able to use the A-frame hydraulic lift on the back of the, on the back of the vessel to begin to pull Dragon up out of the water. Uh, Bob and Doug did report they're seeing the guys climbing around outside their window on the capsule, mm -hmm. getting that rigging affixed. Uh, still doing good uh, from all of their reports. And we're just gonna see the vessel continue to close in. It's a little over 1.3 nautical miles still away, but you can see things starting to sharpen up in our view as it does draw in closer. One thing I didn't get to mention as the sequence events was happening, everything was going so quickly, uh, just before the drogue de deployment, the seats automatically rotated to about 26 degrees. Uh, and so if you think back to when we saw Bob and Doug while they were still on orbit and during the, uh, the deorbit burn and all their departure burns, they were actually laying closer to on their backs at the 40 degree position, uh, where essentially they were looking up at the top of Dragon Capsule, like their stomachs were facing uh, the top nose cone there. At this point, the seats would have rotated, so they're in a little bit more of an upright position. Uh, that's done to ensure that um, the loads experienced from landing are, you know, don't, doesn't, doesn't hurt them. So uh, at this point, they are not really laying on their backs in the ocean. They are seated upright a little bit, which would allow them to have a better view of the team working to install the rigging equipment. So at this point, we're at about 22 minutes until Dragon will be lifted onto the recovery vessel. Bob and Doug are still strapped into their seats, kind of like an airplane. You know, they say, do not unbuckle your seatbelt until the captain determines that it's safe to do so. Uh, they will stay, remain in their seats throughout the entire recovery process, essentially until it's time to get them out. Like I said, we are expecting to lift Dragon onto the Go Navigator recovery ship in about 21 minutes. And then in 28 minutes, we will be opening that hatch and beginning crew egress, also known as exit. And we did hear the rigging is pretty much complete, so uh, right as they arrive there at the capsule, the main recovery vessel will be able to begin uh, getting it up out of the water. So now as the recovery vessel Go Navigator is getting closer to Dragon, Dragon's position there off the coast of Pensacola, Florida, we're able to see the capsule in a little bit more detail. Uh, it is certainly no longer a bright shade of white. <laughs> like we said, those external temperatures uh, were reaching up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So the thermal protective systems, thermal protection systems, uh, enable Dragon to return while keeping the internal temperature rather temperate. And you are seeing a few more boats than expected. Um, the team's currently working uh, with a few private vessels uh, in the area, making sure that they get out of there.
And now we see one of the SpaceX fast boats moving in. So we are being advised that uh, the recovery team is radioing out to the vessels in the water near Crew Dragon to vacate the area uh, so that we're able to extract Bob and Doug safely. Uh, you know, also for the safety of those folks in the area as well, not just Bob and Doug. Yeah, this is, this is obviously a dynamic operation. One of the first things we do is make sure there aren't essentially poisonous fumes around the capsule. So uh, something like this just really can endanger the whole thing, endanger the crew members and endanger themselves. So uh, the SpaceX team is moving in to try and get them away so they can safely recover the Dragon capsule and get Bob and Doug on deck and safely inside their medical quarters. So we can see them, they're getting a lot closer. Uh, we expect uh, about 10 minutes or so until they should be in position. Uh, all the rigging has been affixed on the Dragon capsule. And once they arrive, they'll be able to use that hydraulic lift to get Dragon up and out of the water. So the recovery vessel Go Navigator is getting closer and closer to Dragon Endeavor as it awaits its recovery f or as it awaits to be hoisted out of the Gulf of Mexico. Again, we landed just off the coast of Florida near Pensacola. Maybe next time we shouldn't announce our landing zone. <laughs> oh, there we got a shot from our WB-57 plane. It looks like that area has cleared out significantly. So that is good to see. And we're also hearing that all of the parachutes have buoys on them, so also good news uh, as the recovery process continues for SpaceX Demo 2. Dragon SpaceX for Comrie config. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Doug, we're about to uh, reconfigure the forward link. We uh, may lose that for about one or so minutes, uh, and that should happen shortly. Copy. Yeah, just give us a call back when you think we got it back. Will do. So as the main vessel gets closer, it's gonna back up and get its hydraulic lift set up right next to the Dragon capsule, still in the water. Uh, Bob and Doug still inside, uh, just waiting for that recovery. Uh, we should start the hoisting operations in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And then it'll be a pretty quick uh, lift up out of the water using that hydraulic lift into the Dragon nest on the deck of the boat or the ship rather and then they'll move it underneath the helipad into essentially the crew recovery area where they'll have a platform right up to the hatch. They'll be able to open up the hatch. Uh, SpaceX uh, medical doctor will be the first one through the door, able to do a quick check-in with Bob and Doug on their status. And then he and the other uh, medical doctors, flight surgeons and uh, trained technicians will begin to help them out of the capsule. Yeah, earlier, just after splashdown, we did hear uh, Bob and Doug report that they were feeling good after re-entry, so uh, that was relayed to the flight surgeon, and good news to hear. Again, this is a view coming from the WB-57 plane uh, as it is circling the area, and we can see Dragon awaiting to be pulled out of the water. Again, we are anticipating that lift uh, to begin in just under 15 minutes. We're approaching 14 minutes here. Uh, and then in 21 minutes, we will have an open hatch. <laughs> and you can see the main recovery vessel in the top right there. That's the helipad with uh, the big SpaceX X on top. It's now backing up towards the capsule. 
certainly not to be confused with one of our uh, landing drone ships. <laughs> There's a live view of dragon uh, of dragon floating in the water there in the background, along with many onlookers. <laughs> Certainly from a safer distance at this point. Uh, this is a live shot coming from Go Navigator, our rec primary recovery vessel here. So it's dra crew dragon is also accompanied by the fast boats that are helping to bring it in closer. Um, and there you can see a couple of the recovery team members on the deck uh, and also just behind them, we get our first good view of the nest. Uh, yes, so this is uh, essentially the nest in the background there. Dragon will be hoisted using the hydraulic lift out of the water and into that nest. That nest will then be pulled towards the camera from this view towards those individuals on that upper deck there. Uh, and that's where the- Dragon SpaceX com check. Loud and clear, solo, how us? Loud and clear as well, and from the uh, video, it looks like the boat is about one uh, length away, about five to 10 meters, backing up to you. Copy that, uh, thanks for the update. All right, so good news there. We're getting ready to see Dragon to be lifted out of the water and into the recovery nest. As I was saying, that nest will be pulled towards the camera, uh, towards the upper deck that we saw there, and that's where the medical stretchers will be waiting uh, to assist them into the medical bays for uh, evaluation after capsule egress. It's already been it's already been 25 minutes since they splashed down. It doesn't feel like it. That uh, was definitely the fastest 25 yeah. minutes of the day. <laughs> the, the timeline we were anticipating was for the lifting operations to start within about 30 minutes. So we're pretty much right on the timeline still. That's been a, a pretty common thing so far today. Uh, you can see them uh, with one of the fast boats getting it positioned to start uh, moving out with the additional rigging uh, to affix to the Dragon capsule where they're gonna use this A-frame to pull it up out of the water. And you can see the Dragon nest at the very bottom. It's uh, that circular object uh, with the A-1 right on it. So while this is the first time we are recovering a capsule with crew members on board, the recovery team has been... And Dragon, just letting you know, we got a couple lines connected and uh, rigging is in progress. Captain Matt, SpaceX, thank you. All right there, so just updating the crew that they might feel some uh, momentum as the lines, as a couple of the rigging lines are attached. Uh, there we can actually, there's our first good shot of the individual who is uh, placing that rigging equipment. Equipment Again, that's someone that's highly specialized and very well trained for these operations. Uh, as I was saying, the recovery team has rehearsed and practiced this with Bob and Doug themselves, actually, uh, in a test capsule, practicing the, the egress as well as um, they have recovered, or excuse me, they have practiced the recovery process many times uh, and actually through those practice runs, uh, they have effectively cut the recovery period in half from the initial demo one mission. So uh, it's really nice to see that uh, the, the process itself after being rehearsed and carefully choreographed uh, is, is going super efficiently. Again, uh, safety is the number one priority. So making sure that only uh, personnel involved in active recovery operations are present on the deck. Uh, you may have heard us mention before that there are about 40 people on board today, but we certainly don't want uh, anyone in danger or, or to fall overboard. <laughs> that guy intentionally jumped. <laughs> Speaking of falling overboard. <laughs> We're ready, thank you. All right, so the crew was just told in about 30, in the next 30 seconds, they have the lines affixed, so they're gonna start lifting the capsule up out of the water. And at this point, the communication we're getting with Dragon is actually being routed through the boat itself at this point. So there we can see the lift. Dragon is out of the water. Yeah, so they're now- Now that A-frame's gonna start swinging it back. And it's bound right for that nest at the bottom of your screen.
there, we're getting a better shot of all the points in which Dragon is tethered to the hydraulic lift, ensuring that it isn't swinging freely. And there we can see Dragon Endeavor being carefully set down into the recovery nest on top of Go Navigator. Dragon uh, SpaceX, welcome aboard the recovery vessel. Recovery personnel are completing final checks and preparing to translate you to the egress platform. Be happy, thank you. So for the first time in two months, NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley are on some sort of ground. I guess we can't call it solid ground because it is a ship. However, uh, it is the first time that they are not in space, uh, on a rocket, or bobbing in the ocean. Yeah, so now that they're in the nest, we're, they're going to start translating it forward. And Dragon's going to move into essentially the hangar section underneath that helipad and then up to that recovery platform that we saw a little bit earlier. At that point, uh, the spacecraft technicians will work to open up the hatch. As we said previously, it's a manual process uh, with a couple of different uh, attachments you have to engage before the hatch itself can be opened. They'll get it opened and then uh, SpaceX's Anil Menon will be the first one through the hatchway to check in on Bob and Doug, get their initial health assessment, see if they're ready to move, and then we'll start assisting them out of the capsule and into that medical facility on the boat. So at this point, the recovery team is doing uh, final securing of the capsule in preparation to actually move the recovery nest uh, into closer to the interior of the ship. It'll actually be uh, in a little bit of a covered deck there. We, had a, we saw that camera view earlier uh, looking straight out from the center of the boat. So once Dragon is secured in the nest, uh, the nest will be translated then forward and uh, closer to the recovery uh, the, the, excuse me, closer to the position in which we're able to actually open the hatch. So while Dragon is on board safely, uh, we're not able to do that just yet. Yeah, they're, de they're working to detach some of those lines that were used to hoist it using the A-frame, and uh, we heard that they should be done with that in just a moment, and then we'll start that translation. So right now we can see the recovery team uh, releasing those securing lines that were used during the lift of the capsule from the water uh, into the nest. So they are releasing those securing lines from the sides, making sure it is secure from the bottom. And there we see Dragon moving forward. Look at that. Smooth as a Tesla, I would say. <laughs> it's really interesting to see those scorching marks uh, now that we get a really nice up close detail shot of Dragon. Standing by for the go for side hatch open. That rounded square there in the center of the capsule is that side hatch. And on either side are those oval windows. Dragon SpaceX, stand by for side hatch opening and egress. Happy, we're ready. All right, crew got the call. We are go for hatch open.
and if you look closely immediately above the hatch, you can see the area where you can see them working in now. That's where those drogue chutes deployed from. The two circles on either side were where the mortars were. Uh, the main parachutes uh, now hidden by the platform underneath the, the side hatch. So the crew is in the process of removing the side hatch. We can see that Go Navigator is in transit. It is making its way back to the Pensacola Naval Air Station. However, Bob and Doug will get a ride from the recovery vessel via helicopter. Uh, So again, we're preparing to open the side hatch, and once that, done, once that is done, the flight surgeon will pop his head in, do an initial check, see how Bob and Doug are doing. And Dragon SpaceX, we've got a slight delay due to some uh, potential NTO hits near the side hatch. Copy, Mike, we're uh, standing by. And so they're still continuing to do kind of those sniffs, so checking for any vapors or anything. So those NDO, it's uh, NO2 nitrogen dioxide, uh, primarily can uh, get detected in the air from the burning of fuel. So they're gonna continue to just inspect around the capsule, make sure that it's, again, safe for the crew, safe for the recovery experts uh, before they get this hatch open. But again, moving right along the timeline, it's, uh, since they splashed down at 11.48 uh, a.m. Pacific. And so again, they're just pausing the operations for a moment, doing some additional air sampling uh, around the prop system. We still have uh, telemetry being fed from the vehicle. So flight controllers here in Hawthorne able to monitor prop tanks, propulsion tank pressures and not seeing any issues with those at the moment. So again, just a short pause in the operations is again, they're just sniffing around the capsule, making sure we don't have uh, any readings that might indicate a fuel leak or anything around the vehicle. Uh, they did detect some NDO, some nitrogen dioxide, which is typically a residue that uh, arises from the burning of fuel. So they're continuing to do just a couple of different air readings, uh, grab samples essentially, uh, before they proceed with the hatch opening. Dragon SpaceX update. We're still investigating. Uh, looks like we'll be setting up a service section purge. We're working on an ETA for you. Okay. In case if you're just joining us, 
NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley have safely returned from the International Space Station. They made an on-time splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico just off the coast of Pensacola, Florida at uh, 11.48 a.m. Pacific, 18.48 a.m. Universal Time. And they have been pulled out of the water and hoisted onto the recovery vessel Go Navigator. And right now the team is uh, just completing, uh, they did a, a, an initial check and found that there might be some remnant, remnant vapors, uh, which we certainly don't want to be around when uh, we have Bob and Doug coming out of the capsule. So the team is uh, working to purge the service section in preparation uh, for crew egress. Just a little commentary on uh, the hatches that, that we're, we've been talking about. So while Dragon's top hatch is used to connect to the International Space Station, uh, that's the one that's located under the nose cone, which is currently hidden there uh, at the top of the capsule. Um, uh, before, the, this is the, the side hatch is what is utilize, utilized for uh, ingress and egress, both on the launch pad as well as coming up here on the recovery vessel. When the international, or excuse me, when the capsule is docked to the International Space Station, uh, they will use the forward hatch to exit and enter the capsule. Something to note that once that side hatch is opened, uh, it'll be the first time that Bob and Doug have gotten a breath of fresh air. Uh, the first time that they've been able to do so in two months uh, since they boarded the Falcon 9 uh, at the start of their mission back on May 30th. Yeah, with an on-time splashdown, they returned with almost exactly 64 days in space on this mission, just a few minutes shy of that. Um, so I know they're looking forward to it. Uh, for at a minimum, in a little bit more of a stable condition now that they're on the boat, not in the water. Uh, but again, our team's just continuing to step through. They're, they're reporting that they're seeing uh, all of the vapor levels that they initially detected have been dropping, um, and that service and section dra purge. Dragon uh, SpaceX, uh, we showed that levels are declining, but are uh, continuing with purge. Copy. Uh, and in addition, just so you know, we are not seeing any, you know, leak indications or anything like that. These are pretty small levels, but we still need to do the purge at this time. Okay, Kathy. Yeah, you're reading our mind, Mike. We were just wondering if you saw any indications of a leak or some depressurization somewhere, but it sounds like it's just uh, part of the deal. Yeah, that's a good read back, Doug. So we're just continuing to get a view down uh, right at the hatch of the capsule. They are detecting those very small traces uh, of a couple of the hypergalls. Um, the one we've heard specifically mentioned was uh, NDO or NO3 uh, nitrogen or NO2 nitrogen dioxide. Um, they are at very low levels, um, obviously not at a very harmful level as we still have people in close proximity to the capsule. Uh, they are going through with the purge. They're not seeing any indications of a leak uh, in the service section of Dragon. That's where uh, pretty much all of those different fuel tanks uh, with the hypergalls are located uh, inside the capsule. And we are just about 44 minutes post splashdown, uh, actually still ahead of the timeline. 
as we weren't expecting to get the hatch open until shortly before 60 minutes, uh, at which point we'd be bringing Bob and Doug out. So uh, this and service Dragon section. SpaceX, another update. The service section purge should begin in a bit under five minutes. Uh, right now we're showing NTO about 2x of our personnel exposure limits, and uh, we're hoping once we start the purge, it'll drop down for us. Okay, thanks, Mike. And I'm going to have to correct myself. So it's NTO, that's the dinitrogen te tetraoxide, and that's one of the hypergolic fuels used inside Dragon for powering those uh, Draco thrusters. So again, the SpaceX engineers detecting uh, levels of NTO, it's dinitrogen tetraoxide. It's one of the hypergolic fuels used inside the Dragon spacecraft. Um, levels higher than they would like. Um, so they're essentially doing a purge to help uh, dissipate any vapors in and around the service section where those fuel tanks reside in the Dragon capsule. We're expecting that to take within the next five minutes or so. Uh, we were still expecting the crew out inside of an hour, so still on the timeline or a few minutes ahead, and we should be seeing Bob and Doug. Uh, once we see those uh, levels continue to drop around the capsule, they'll begin to step through the hatch opening process once again. So right now we're getting ready to purge the service section. Uh, this is to make sure that uh, the lingering NTO fumes that the team is detecting uh, get flushed out essentially. Uh, the service section is not the interior cabin where Bob and Doug are. Uh, it's actually the part of the capsule that is outside of the place where Bob and Doug are. It's, it's external to the, to the cabin but it's inside the capsule itself. So you can think of it as the space between the exterior of the Dragon capsule and the interior space uh, where Bob and Doug are. There's- the, I think the interior pressure vessel essentially. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Bob and Doug are fine. The air that they are breathing um, is, you know, that nitrox uh, mix that they've been getting throughout the entire duration of, of, of today's uh, operations, but it'll be essentially the area below their cabin, um, completely sealed off from the service section. Yeah, that service section is where uh, we, there's a lot of telemetry, it's where um, there are the prop tanks, and we're just making sure that those get aerated so that uh, lingering fumes are swept away. Again, they had detected higher levels than they want to see of nitrogen tetraoxide. Uh, that's one of the two hypergolic fuels used uh, in Dragon, the other one being monomethyl hydrazine. Uh, those two fuels, uh, essentially when thrown together, even without an ignition source, uh, will react. Uh, that's what makes them hypergolic fuels. Uh, much simpler, more elegant uh, solution used in a lot of 
um, on-orbit maneuvering systems uh, in spacecraft. So again, we're just standing by. So as you can see on your screen, there is one crew member that has kind of what looks like a... Dragon, SpaceX, uh, don't have a great, a huge update for you. Just letting you know the service section uh, purge is still in work. Um, and we'll try to get you out of there shortly. Traffic. So as I was saying, two individuals on your screen there, one uh, with a face mask and what looks like a scuba tank there uh, with some clean breathing air. Um, there might be another crew member with the same personal protective equipment or PPE that will come on deck here. Uh, that type of equipment, ah, there we go. Uh, that's the kind of equipment that is required in order to perform this purge. Again, uh, the NTO is, the fumes from that are toxic. And of course, we want to keep all crew members safe as we prepare the side hatch for opening in order to let Dragon Bob and SpaceX. Doug egress. Uh, looks like limits uh, are dropping and getting pretty good. Uh, we're still continuing with the purge just to be extra sure. Okay, that sounds good, Mike. Thank you. All right, so we just heard the call, the limits continuing to drop uh, on that uh, that NTO, that nitrogen uh, tetraoxide. So they're just gonna continue to monitor those. They're doing a purge, essentially flushing the air around the service section where the tanks uh, for those hypergolic fuels are in Dragon. Uh, as Kate was talking about, they're not inside the pressure vessel, the section of the Dragon interior where Bob and Doug and their atmosphere exists. Uh, they're essentially outside the pressure vessel, but still inside the outer shell of the Dragon spacecraft. We are just about 52 minutes post splashdown. Again, we're just waiting for them to get good readings on the levels of any hypergol vapors still in existence around the capsule, and then they'll be able to step back in uh, to this hatch opening. Now, we did hear confirmation that they haven't seen any indication of leaks through the telemetry they're still receiving from the Dragon capsule. And so, Dragon SpaceX, we're going to purge for one more minute. Copy. There we go. Should be one more minute. And then if levels have dropped sufficiently, we'll be able to step back in to the hatch opening process. Bob and Doug will be getting assistance from the recovery teams while exiting Dragon Endeavor. Uh, this is the same process for any returning long duration crew members uh, as returning to a gravity rich environment can, you know, be a little jarring, wreak havoc with our vestibular system. So uh, 
which is responsible for maintaining balance and motion. Of course, as you've heard us say multiple times earlier, uh, safety is our number one priority with this operation. So you will see both Bob and Doug helped out of the capsule and assisted to just the few feet over to the medical quarters uh, aboard the boat. Yeah, if, if you've ever watched long duration crews return on a Soyuz, it's pretty similar process where they're literally carried out of the capsule and immediately placed down into a waiting chair where they usually get some initial medical checks out there in the field before they're then carried to an inflated medical tent. Uh, we don't have a tent, we have quarters and they're a whole lot closer. So they'll just have a couple of feet to go from the capsule itself into those medical quarters. And then once they're in there, they'll get some initial checkouts uh, from their flight surgeons who are on location on the boat with them. These are the people that that have essentially been responsible for their health and well-being throughout their mission, uh, both beforehand, all of their pre-flight data takes, uh, offering them support uh, in the lead up to launch, uh, and then the entire time while on board the International Space Station, and then they're right here with the front line, with the recovery teams, ready to welcome them home. So it's been just about a minute since we heard that last call to the crew. We should be just about done with the purge. We're gonna stand by and hopefully we'll resume these hatch opening operations uh, in just a moment. Try again, SpaceX for update. Okay, exterior, we're seeing uh, three parts per million NTO and six parts per billion of uh, MMH. Anil, however, is asking that you uh, de-stow your Draggers and take a sample inside the cabin. Yeah, which detector, what number, Mike? Yeah, it'll be uh, detectors two and three in location 14. Copy. Okay, thanks, Doug. All right, so we just got the, the call out of the current readings of both uh, the NTO, the nitrogen tetroxide, and the monomethyl hydrazine. Uh, either in the parts per million or the parts per billion, but just as an extra safety precaution, uh, we heard Anil, so Anil Menon, the uh, medical authority from SpaceX on the boat, asking the crew to take out some uh, air detectors that they have inside with them just to do some quick sampling inside the cabin itself. So again, we've said it before, we'll continue to say it throughout safety, the top priority with this operation. So the teams are going to be very methodical and make sure that everything is in a good setup, a safe environment, uh, not only for the crew themselves, but also for our recovery forces. Uh, but for now, Bob and Doug still inside of a Crew Dragon. We are just 58 minutes post landing. Dragon with a status. Go ahead, Doug. Okay, for uh, NO2 on detector two, it reads 0, 0.0. And on detector three, it also reads 0, 0.0 for MMH. Okay, great news. 0, 0.0 for detectors two and three for NO2 and MMH. Thank you very much. 
That's a good copy. And so Doug Hurley reporting zeros across the board, no traces uh, of either the NTO or the MMH. Dragon SpaceX for a status update. Okay, so currently our exposure limits um, are below limits, but the purge is actually doing a pretty good job. We saw NTO go from uh, three parts per million down to 1.5 over the last few minutes. So ideally, with a lot of caution, we'd go ahead and let the purge run for a little bit longer, but we want to see how you guys are doing, if you're okay with uh, continuing with, a, with the uh, purge versus uh, knock it off and uh, get you guys out of there quickly. Yeah, we're fine to hang it out, Mike. Uh, yeah, no problem here. Okay, thanks for that, Doug. We'll uh, keep working the purge to uh, get us down, and uh, and uh, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yeah, let's just keep everybody safe. No reason to rush. Yeah, we concur. Spacecraft Commander Doug Hurley reporting the crew still doing well in Dragon, so they are good to continue to hang out. Uh, the medical authority there on the boat recommending uh, as long as the crew is okay and still doing well inside Dragon, they'll just continue with the purge, trying to get those uh, trace readings of any hypergolf vapors all the way down to zero. Because again, we're really focused on not only keeping the astronauts safe, but all of the recovery engineers and medical professionals there on the scene as well. So they're going to continue this purge, just uh, dispelling uh, the immediate area around the service section uh, of the Dragon spacecraft. So this is uh, really a series of fuel tanks um, outside of the pressure vessel, so where uh, Bob and Doug are inside the Dragon spacecraft, which they did uh, some quick readings inside the cabin and had zeros across the board, uh, but they're just continuing to let these levels dissipate, bring it down to zero, and then we'll resume hatch operations. We're just a little over an hour now, an hour and two minutes post splashdown. Yeah, good to hear Bob and Doug report that they're good hanging out, meaning they're feeling all right and they're pretty comfortable staying inside for just a couple more minutes. Yeah, they were they were doing their best uh, prior to leaving uh, of playing up their expected seasickness. Um, so good, it, it is good to hear that they're doing well still inside the Dragon capsule. And uh, Dragon SpaceX, we're still seeing good indications from the purge. We're looking to uh, go about another five minutes and looking for zero indications. If at any time you'd like us to speed things up, please uh, let us know. Oh, we're good. Just keep doing what you're doing. We can wait the five. Easy. All right. Thanks, Doug. All right. So we'll settle in uh, at least another five minutes while they just continue to 
disperse any trace remnants of those hypergol fuels around the service section uh, of Dragon before we once again step uh, into the hatch opening. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna stay with you, stay with this until Bob and Doug are out of the capsule and into their medical quarters. At this point, Bob and Doug are still uh, strapped into their seats. The seats have actuated uh, away from the position where, I guess, in the orientation in which you see the capsule now, uh, during their on-orbit, excuse me, during the departure phasing earlier this morning and yesterday, the orientation of the seats were such that uh, essentially, Bob and Doug would have been laying on their backs in the orientation where we see Dragon now. Uh, currently, the seats have actuated upward slightly, so uh, they are not completely upright, but they are reclined a little bit, nice and comfy there. Uh, but they are able to see in and out of those windows there that we see on either side of the side hatch. And then once they're able to finish the really uh, the egress process, getting Bob and Doug out of the capsule. Uh, once they're in the medical area, they'll look to start bringing in the helicopter um, as both uh, Bob and Doug are gonna be flown back to Pensacola via helicopter, uh, getting them uh, to the shore in just a matter of minutes where a NASA plane's gonna be standing by to then load them up and bring them home to Ellington Airfield at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. And uh, Dragon SpaceX, things are still trending well. We're expecting another reading in about two minutes, so at 1956, and uh, looking to hopefully egress you guys shortly after that. Okay, sounds good, bud, thank you. In light of one of the social media questions that we were asked earlier, someone asked if Bob and Doug have Netflix available on their heads-up displays there in the capsule, and uh, they've been, they've actually been pretty busy throughout um, this mission, you know, monitoring telemetry and data and checking for timing. Uh, and I would say now's about the time that they would certainly want something to watch because, uh, you know, at this point, their only job left to do is uh, get out of the capsule. has to be a feeling of just success though for those two. I mean, taking taking the first flight in a brand new spacecraft, we knew as test pilots, this is something uh, that was kind of their bread and butter when they were in the military, and definitely something they, they left at the chance for uh, once they became astronauts. And really a, a pretty flawless flight for Dragon. Uh, obviously we'll have all of the, the post-flight review coming up in the next several weeks as we uh, continue to assess all the data uh, that we received throughout the mission and any data still recorded locally on Dragon itself. And we'll be spending the next several weeks uh, going through and assessing the mission and working through the certification process. And we're already targeting uh, the first operational flight, uh, currently pegged for no earlier than late September. And Dragon SpaceX, we're now planning to stop the purge in one minute at about 19.57. Copy. Thank you. All right. Well, with them stopping the purge in about a minute, that means that the levels have gone down to what they were looking for. And then we'll begin to, to step back into the hatch opening process and then be able to get Bob and Doug egressing or moving out of the Dragon capsule. They've been in there for a little more than 19 hours at this point since they departed the space station on Saturday. 
They had a sleep period, eight hours of rest on the capsule on their way home. Uh, they've been up since a little bit earlier this morning at, at wake coming about 4.40 a.m. Pacific, so a little more than eight hours ago. And uh, Dragon, the uh, purge is now complete. One more Drager check, and then we should proceed with hatch opening. Okay, good news, thanks. That is good news indeed. So confirmation that the purge is complete and that they're just gonna do one more test to make sure that uh, all of the fumes of concern are away and that it is safe to open that side hatch and retrieve Bob and Doug. Once again, once that side hatch is open, our flight surgeon will be the first to say hello, get a quick medical checkup, although based on the reports that they've been, uh, that the crew have been giving us along the way, it sounds like they're doing great, they're feeling good, and they're pretty comfortable there inside a Crew Dragon. And uh, Dragon SpaceX, we show 0 0.4 parts per million on NTO, 18 parts per billion of MMH, that's below limits. We are proceeding with hatch opening. Okay, great news, thanks Mike. All right, so there's the green light we've been waiting for. Uh, in fact, the green light <laughs> we've been waiting for for months at this point. Uh, this is our first opportunity to say hello to Bob and Doug, our favorite space dads, uh, as they are now about to uh, egress or exit from Dragon Crew Endeavor. Again, this is the culmination of uh, what has been about a 19-hour journey home, all starting yesterday, as they departed the International Space Station. So this hatch will be manually opened, and once doing so, flight surgeon Anil Menon will uh, say hello and make sure that they're still doing all right and then proceed to assist them with exiting the capsule. And we see the hatch is now open. Hatch being opened at 12.59 p.m. Pacific. The hatch is open. So right now they're gonna put a piece of equipment in there that basically smooths out the edges and make sure uh, that it is a comfortable exit from the Dragon capsule. Just a little piece of structure there to ensure that uh, the hatch will remain open and that any sharp edges around that side hatch are protected. In the blue suit there, that's one of NASA's flight surgeons for the crew, that's Dr. Stephen Hart. And that hatch open coming at 12.59 p.m. Pacific, that's 19.59 Universal Time or GMT. So once again, the SpaceX recovery team is now assisting NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley uh, to exit the spacecraft. Sorry, we got the hatch open just about two minutes ago. We paused for a little while as they were just detecting some trace amounts 
of uh, some of the hypergol fuels. Uh, so we executed a series of purges. Um, and then once those were down back in acceptable limits, uh, we were able to then start with the egress. So there we see a stretcher on deck. Uh, this is normal. Uh, this is part of the standard recovery procedure. And uh, it is just simply to ensure Bob and Doug remain safe. Uh, like we said, readjusting to gravity can be a little challenging. Uh, dizziness can often occur, especially when you're on a boat. SpaceX Dragon, pick up. So this stretcher will just be used to uh, a standard procedure to make sure that the astronauts make it over to the medical tent as easily and as comfortably as possible. Yeah, as we discussed, uh, the reintroduction to, to gravity from microgravity can be a bit jarring, especially on our vestibular system, so the stuff responsible for our balance. And as they are on a ship underway, we just want to make sure we're taking every possible precaution to ensure that their arrival is safe and free from any injury now that they are home. And they're working to get a few of the items uh, from the seats out of the way first before they begin extracting our crew members. They'll be coming out one at a time. As we saw during the ascent portion of this mission, there is enough room inside the capsule for uh, them to do a backflip in <laughs> microgravity. However, considering uh, there's a couple folks in there right now from the recovery team. Got you loud and clear. Just a quick comm check there between Dragon and Mission Control and here. And Solo from the PLC, I just wanted to thank you guys for uh, bringing us home safe before we, uh, I disembark from the ship Endeavor. I'm sure Doug will have some good words for you guys as well, but uh, thank you for doing the most difficult parts and the most impart important parts of uh, human space flight, getting us into orbit and bringing us home safely. Thank you again for the good ship Endeavor. Thank you, Bob, for those awesome words. It's, it's absolutely been an honor and a pleasure to work with you from the entire SpaceX team. It's been awesome. Some initial words from NASA astronaut Bob Banken. He's in the pilot seat, so you've heard him refer to himself as PLT. We're still standing by for crew members to begin making their way out of the Crew Dragon spacecraft. And again, they're gonna get some assistance, just the, the couple of feet to the medical quarters on board the ship, uh, where they're gonna be able to uh, get out of their suits that they've been wearing for all the, the final dynamic phases of the uh, separation events, deorbit burn, re-entry. Uh, splashing down uh, just a little over an hour ago at 11.48 p.m. or a.m. Pacific time. Again, the recovery team. SpaceX Dragon from the commander. Go for SpaceX. Here we have our first view of yeah, Mike, Doug Hurley. I just would like to sort of reiterate what Bob said and add uh, my thanks to uh, everybody over the last several years that's either worked in Hawthorne, McGregor, or down at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Anybody who's touched Endeavor, uh, you should take a moment to just cherish this day, especially given all the things that have happened this year. Uh, we certainly can't thank you enough. Our families can't thank you enough. And, uh, just proud to be a small part of this whole effort to get the, the company 
people to and from the space station. They can celebrate with each other. We see you soon. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, hopefully in person. Thanks so much, Doug, and you're welcome. And, and thank you so much for those kind words. And we all wish you a safe journey home and a happy reunion with your family soon. And we look forward to seeing you in person as well. Some really nice words there from Bob Benkin. There on your screen, we saw uh, NASA astronaut Doug Hurley egressing or exiting from the capsule. Might have been hard to see on your screen there, but um, we got a thumbs up indicating that uh, things are going well. I'm sorry, excuse me, I mixed up my positions there. Yeah, uh, those words were from Doug, and we have Bob that just came out first. Yeah, so Bob Bank and uh, the pilot, the Joint Operations Commander for this mission out of the capsule now. So he's making his way over to the medical area, and now they're gonna work to get Doug Hurley out next. I think I saw a smile black. on Bob's face. <laughs> he, was, he was a thumbs up all the way as they've been giving us some regular status updates from inside the capsule, they've been feeling really good. And so now we're just standing by for our spacecraft commander, Doug Hurley, to make his way out into the fresh air for the first time in 64 days. All right, so they're getting set up, and we should see spacecraft commander Doug Hurley making his way out of the capsule. And it looks like we've got him out. We've got him seated. And there we go, another thumbs up. We've got some applause here. And as you can see in Mission Control, a standing <laughs> ovation for a job well done all around. Yeah, our, our crew members, Bob and Doug, are now safely back home on Earth, and uh, they're gonna get checked out now by the NASA medical team. They're going straight into the medical quarters on board the ship. That'll be their first stop on planet Earth, and then they're gonna be making their way up into a helicopter and then heading back to dry land. So uh, once they're complete, the team's gonna prepare Dragon itself, uh, and they're going to begin uh, taking it back to shore. Uh, but just, it's been an incredible, incredible mission. Uh, this all kicked off just two months ago on May 30th from Launch Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We had a successful liftoff. We had to dodge around some weather. It was suspenseful, clearing up the last possible moment. They had a flawless ride to orbit, a 19-hour journey to the International Space Station where they just spent 62 days on board, 64 total days in space. They were Expedition 30. 63 crew members doing science experiments, spacewalks, repairs, everything on board the orbiting laboratory. Their journey home began yesterday when they closed the hatch to Dragon and undocked hours later at 4.35 p.m. Pacific. After four successful departure burns and a phasing burn to line up their orbit, Bob and Doug rested up before waking up for re-entry earlier this morning. 
We successfully jettisoned Dragon's trunk and performed our final on-orbit maneuver, the deorbit burn, at 10.56 a.m. Pacific to send Dragon on the path home. The spacecraft successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and slowed its descent with successful deployments of two drogue parachutes and four mains, with the final splashdown occurring off the coast of Pensacola, Florida at 11.48 a.m. Pacific, right on time. Following that successful splashdown, we saw SpaceX recovery experts quickly move in and prepare Dragon Endeavor for its lift onto the recovery vessel. And just a little less than an hour following splashdown, we saw Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley make their way, thumbs up, <laughs> out of Dragon and into the recovery ship's medical facilities, safe and sound. Yeah, we just got word that the helicopter itself should be landing soon, so that'll be their next step in their journey. They'll catch a short flight back to shore where they're going to transfer to a waiting NASA plane for another short flight uh, back over to Houston. Uh, they're going to be reunited with their families, and that's going to bring an end to this historic flight. Uh, it's it's really been an honor and a privilege to share this journey with all of you uh, as we open up this new era in human space flight. Uh, but I mean, just as we close the book on this mission, we're already counting down the days to the next crewed Dragon flight. Yeah, absolutely. SpaceX and NASA will now begin the process of reviewing data and telemetry from this successful demonstration mission to prepare us for Crew-1, which is currently targeted to launch no earlier than late September. Crew-1 will be SpaceX's first operational flight, flying a full crew of four astronauts, including our first from Japan, one of the international partners on the space station. Uh, the mission will last approximately six months. It has been an incredible honor and joy to share this mission with the public, and the teams from SpaceX and NASA have worked so hard to get here and return this capability to fly humans from America. Continue to follow SpaceX and NASA online and on our social media updates and social media updates for the next steps on the commercial crew program and the countdown to crew one. And we're going to continue to share the progress of Bob and Doug's trip back to Houston on social media. We also have a briefing coming up real soon. It's going to include NASA Administrator uh, Jim Bridenstine and officials from NASA and SpaceX. That's coming up right at the bottom of the hour, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 20.30 GMT. So we're going to say thanks one more time for tuning in, cheering on Bob and Doug as they return home. And we'll see you next time when we'll once again be sending astronauts on American rockets in American spacecraft from American soil. So long.